Hello, Kitty. In the last video, we talked about the best time to get initial feedback on a written story, and we talked about the difference between sharing a story versus bouncing off an idea. Now let's talk about the next step, which is to illustrate our written story. To me, this next step is the hardest part of the whole comic book creation process, because we're creating something out of nothing. We're translating an idea into something physical. Even though I have a written story to guide me, the way I imagine the picture in my head feels like a Rorschach test. It looks fuzzy. It looks fluid and loose. So it makes sense to draw thumbnails first, or to do draft sketches before finalizing our illustrations. In my first two comic books, Mumbo's Jumbo and Nod and Sleep, that's what I did. I drew mockups of the panels in my sketchbook before I illustrated them onto the final paper. Now these are not thumbnails, but mockups, because they are fully rendered. I started off with a very light underdrawing using graphite pencil. And then I trace it with colored pencils. And then I added shading. Adding the shading was an extra step I did that I didn't have to do, but it was going to help me figure out the right tones in my final painting. This method is an effect of using traditional media. Because there are no unlimited undos, I have to plan my drawings carefully. But it was a step that I wish I could skip. So in my third comic book, I tried testing if I could finish illustrating it without creating draft sketches on a separate sheet. So I just went straight at it. The pencil underdrawing, the gouache painting, and the lettering were all done on the same sheet of paper. So this, what you're seeing here, is the actual artwork that I ended up printing. It was a fun little experiment that taught me to be more decisive in my pencil underdrawings. It trained me to be able to skip creating thumbnails and mockups altogether. In this big book project, I initially went straight at it, with the underdrawing and the coloring of the final art in one go. But after completing two chapters, I started to miss being able to review all the drawn pages in its draft state. Even though, based on my past behavior, I don't tend to make a lot of last minute adjustments. There's still something mentally reassuring about having a tangible mock-up of the entire book before executing the final art. I don't know why, but it just feels right to have that mock-up in my hands. So now, I'm trying to combine the two methods I used in the past. I'm still going straight at it with my underdrawing, so no thumbnails and no mock-ups needed, but I will wait until I have finished the underdrawing of the entire book before I color it in. And this time around, I'm discovering the value of using sticky notes to help me create something out of nothing. In the next video, I'll show you how this is done. That's all for now. I'll talk to you later.